As we prepare to go to the Lord in worship this morning, would you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here this day, on this day that you have created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, as we worship here this morning, may we feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as you speak to our hearts and as you bless each one of us in our service to you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed that's found in your bulletin. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, we have to be humble in your presence because we know that we've not always 
acted in the ways that we should. We know that there are times, because we are human, and because we experience fear and frustration and anger and, and grief, Lord, there are times that we just don't respond in the way that we should. We don't remember who you are or whose we are. And so, Lord, as we seek forgiveness of our sins, we, we also seek forgiveness, Lord, for the things that we neglect. We get so busy at times that we sometimes don't spend as much time in prayer with you as we should. We don't spend time as much as we should in your word, learning more about you. And so, Lord, as we, we seek forgiveness today, we seek also growth in spirit that we may draw nearer to you and better serve others by serving you. Lord, we lift all these things up to you, the Lord of our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We try each of his, each of his disciples to pray together the prayer that we now share as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Scripture lessons this morning are first from Psalms, chapter 107, verses 17 through 22. Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. All right. Book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. After he had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We appreciate Bob being little just this morning. I think the last time you were little, just I gave you Mark 150. And there is no Mark 150. So we, we appreciate Bob being here. It's, it's always my joy to share the pulpit with our lay speakers, as I will be doing this morning and next Sunday on Methodist Men's Day when Jim Jenkins will be delivering the message to you. Um, Laverna does a number of things for our church, and we are very fortunate to have her with us, and the things that she has done in the past and continues to do for the church. And so I would ask you, 
to welcome Laverna this morning as she presents the message to us. Thank you and good morning. The last few weeks, you know, we've been hearing about Jesus going around the countryside teaching and preaching. He fed the 5,000 and then again he fed again several thousand. And when we come to this scripture, he has just finished preaching the Sermon on the Mount, the Blessed Ours and the Beatitudes, and he's just finished confronting the Pharisees. And then the Bible says, now when he concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Jesus spent a lot of time in Capernaum. It was a seaport there on the Galilean Sea. And it was home base for him as he traveled around the countryside teaching and healing. He would go out from there to the people and then he would come back there to rest. Due to all of his teachings and healings, there was a certain amount of fame that was attached to Jesus, and often where he was going was well known before he ever got there. On this day, there was a certain centurion, a military leader that was sent from Rome to make sure the Jewish people submitted to the authority of Rome, and he was looking for help. This man, though he was a Gentile and had come from a foreign country, had taken to heart the teachings of the Jews about the one true God, and he had learned to care deeply for the people and for their God. He was remarkable because he held the people in such great esteem. Most leaders sent by Rome were interested mainly in keeping peace and doing whatever it took to keep that peace. They didn't have to like the people they ruled, and they could use them and abuse them just about in any way they wished. This centurion, though, had compassion on the people around him. He loved the Jewish people so much that he had built a synagogue, synagogue for them so they could worship. Now, this centurion was unusual in that he had a servant that he deeply cared for. Most masters considered their servants to be things that were to be used and, that were to be used and were to be discarded when they were used up. But this servant had been so faithful and so loyal to his master that his master had a great respect and compassion for him. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. This centurion was greatly concerned. He didn't want his servant to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. Now here are a couple of unusual things. As Dr. Ralph Wilson noted, Respected Jews were often proud that they had no association with non-Jews. It was just not to be done. You did not associate with people outside of your own people, the Jewish people. Yet these Jewish elders were willing to do the bidding of a Gentile military leader. They appreciated the love and the concern that he had for them, and they had great respect for him. Also, they didn't, but they did not recognize that Jesus was the Son of God. However, they did recognize that Jesus had healing power. And so when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Did Jesus hesitate? Did he say, why didn't this man come to me himself? Did he feel affronted that a Gentile foreigner would have the nerve to ask him for a favor? No. Great was Jesus' compassion for all people. Time after time he heard their cries and he answered their calls, be they Jews or be they Gentiles. 
So then Jesus went with them. He went with the Jewish leaders. The centurion did not consider himself worthy of having Jesus come to his house. Somehow he sensed that Jesus had been sent by God with certain powers given to him by God for healing. He did not make the mistake of thinking that the powers were Jesus's alone. He knew they came from God, and he had a great respect for Jesus. He most likely also knew that Jews did not enter the house of a Gentile. It made them unclean. Pardon me. So when Jesus was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am unworthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. As a man under authority and in authority, the centurion recognized that Jesus was a man with authority from God to command that a thing be done, and it would be done. He did not have to physically be there or to touch the person for the thing to happen. The centurion had faith that Jesus could just speak a word from afar, and what he wanted would be done. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even as in Israel. Can you imagine what the Jewish elders and the people thought about that? The Jewish people, the people especially chosen by God to be the light of the world, had just been said to be lesser to a Gentile. They had always ranked themselves above Gentiles, but their faith had been found to be lacking in this case. That must upset a few of them. But those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Blind faith. Faith that believes what cannot be seen. This was the faith that the centurion had. Faith that Jesus could speak a word and a thing would be done. In Genesis it tells us that in the beginning God spoke the word for six days and all that is upon the earth, the earth and all that is upon it was created. God is still speaking the word today. He delegates his authority and orders to us. We are the ones who are to reach the world for him. We are the ones to help the sick, to assist those who desperately need help, to love the unlovable as well as the lovable. Do we trust God that what he promised he will do? Can we give up command of our own lives and let God take control? Can we take action when God needs us to do his work in this world? Can we say, speak, Lord, and I will do it? We've come far in our faith, but we have so much further to go. We must have faith, the faith of a centurion, to know that God hears us and still acts today. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we can share that faith with others, the difference it makes in this world will be great. Let us pray with the words of Dr. Philip McClarty. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of every earthly woe, that will not murmur nor complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief and, or pain will lead upon its God. Lord, give me such a faith as this, and, what, and then whate'er may come, I'll taste it in now, the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I hope that, that this week it'll be easier for you 
to hear that voice of God speaking to you, making promises to you, but also asking you to do things for him. Thank you. As we close this morning, I'm going to ask everybody to come down and join me for the sanctuary. And thank her for her message today. Faith is an important thing in our lives. Faith is something that we need to improve in our hearts. I told you last week that children accept faith, accept the miracles of God without question. But as we grow older, we sometimes question that God will take care of us. God will take care of us in every way, in every day. So I said before this morning, those whom God loves, cares for, blesses and enriches. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.